Welcome back everyone. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to keep our car a little bit more stable so it doesn't flip flop and roll around so much on us. And there's a couple ways we're going to do that. Uh, two ways we're going to implement today. And one's pretty simple. Uh, there's really no scripting involved with it. And the other we're actually just going to be using a script that we actually have available online. We'll have to convert it over to C Sharp but that's not that hard. But anyway let's go ahead we'll jump in and let's take a look. <music> All right, so we are in our project. I'm gonna go ahead and start this up. And we'll get our car to drop down. I'm just gonna hit double F just so we can keep a look at it in the scene here. And if we drive around, let's actually get some speed going. And I actually wanna go this way, just so I can see the tires better. Now we'll notice that when we turn, see how one side lifts up, one side digs down? We're going to implement some sway bars or some call them anti-roll bars and basically all it's going to do is take a little bit of pressure off of one side, the side that's being pushed down and move it over to the other side basically. Um, sometimes it's called anti-roll bars. I know them as sway bars. They have a few other names. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you where I got the script. At least I'll leave it down in the, the description in the course settings. But that's the first thing we're going to implement. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at this. All right, so if we come over to the forms for unity3d.com, I'll go ahead and leave this link in the course description. Uh, we'll come down. And right here we actually have the full script, but it is in JavaScript. I will go ahead and convert this to C Sharp for you. Uh, we, we could leave it in JavaScript, and it should work in our project, but I just, we'll just keep everything C Sharp just so there's no complication later on. But we're going to go ahead and take uh, basically the force from one side, comparing it to the force on the other side, kind of balance them out, shift it around uh, by adjusting the rigid body. The code's all here for you. So let's go ahead and plop it into our editor. So I've already gone ahead and created the script. Sway bar, I called it. And I went ahead and dropped all the code in and switched over to C sharp. So let's just start right at the top. Now since this does work on our rigid body, I want to make sure that whatever I have this attached to actually has a rigid body. So I went ahead and added the line at the top for the required component. And of course we just had to switch uh, this over to public. Make sure it's a wheel collider or anti-roll force. Leave that public so we can uh, play with it in the inspector. Now for Unity 5, the way it has it where it's just accessing the rigid body. We can't do that anymore in Unity 5. In Unity 4, it still works. But to just basically future-proof it for Unity 5, I've gone ahead and in our wake statement, just grab the component for the rigid body. That's really the only difference we have to do. So we'll come down, we have our wheel hit. We got a couple of floats just to see how much compression we basically have going on each side. Switched everything over to bool. Again, all the codes there. I'll leave it for you to read through. Uh, there's a few things I'd like to change, but anyway, we're going to leave it the exact way it was originally. We will be coming through here modifying this in later tutorials, but for now we're going to leave it there. Now the thing to keep in mind here is that you're going to need uh, this script attached to your your car uh, in pairs. So if uh, you, for instance, our car has four tires, one on the left, one on the right in the front, and one on the right and one on the left in the back. So we're going to want to attach one for the front tires and one for the back tires. And if you've got more than two sets of tires on your vehicle, you're going to go ahead and add uh, more than two of these. So let's go ahead. We'll take our car. We're going to go and find its prefab. I'm just going to go ahead and drag it into our scene, bring it up a bit. Great. Uh, so we'll expand it. And I've just been attaching everything here. And this seems like a good spot to attach it as well. So we'll just add it on as a component. Sway bar. And we are going to need two. So we'll throw them on. I kind of want to have a game object, you know, front and back. Hmm. But if I do that, then I'm going to go and have to use the um, rigid body uh, from that 
the top part here, which isn't that bad. We can just go ahead and just let you drag it, drag and drop it in. And I actually like that better. I'm not sure if it's going to work the way I think it will, but we'll go ahead and we'll try it anyway. So I'm going to create an empty here. And this is just going to be the sway bars. Where'd it go? Uh, Fortune, where'd it go? Disappear on me? Well, well, it's there this time. So we'll go ahead. We'll just call this uh, front axle. And I'm just going to duplicate it and call it rear. We probably should keep lowercase. Great. So we have our two axles. And I'm thinking about putting the wheels under there. And I believe we'll still work. If not, we can pop them out after. So let's go. We'll grab the front left, front right. Drop them under the front axle. Yeah, we're going to lose our prefab. And then for our real axle, we'll grab those wheels. And I like these up. Uh, what's this? For some reason, we have a game object here we're not using. Well, we'll just delete it for now. We don't need that. We'll be adding another one later on, but we don't need that one there. I want camera down here. I want that above there. So this is actually where we have our rigid body, wasn't it? Oh, no, no. We had it attached right here. Okay. So we're going to have to expose this. We're going to have to make it public now. This is the way I did it. And we won't require a rigid body here. And I'm just going to put it up there now. No air is great. So let's go ahead. We'll look at the front one first. And we'll put the sway bar on it. And I'm going to come up to car and we'll go ahead and get rid of these. I'm pretty sure this will work. Okay, so front axle, we've got our sway bar, rear axle, we'll put our sway bar. And we're going to need a few things here. We're going to need our rigid body. We're going to need our wheel colliders. So front left, uh, this will be left. Front right, this will be our right. And I haven't actually tested this yet, so I'm going to leave the anti-roll at the default values. And if we come down to our rear axle, we do the exact same thing. We need this rigid body. Now, of course, knowing the way this is built, instead of assigning it, we could just have it go up and grab it. Uh, this is right, left, right, left, rear, left, and rear, right. Go ahead, let's save this off, and let's hit play and see what happens now. Uh, missing component exception. There is no rigid body attached to the rear axle. So we'll come and take a look, our body, and it's because I have this here. We no longer need this. Look at that. <laughs> Start it back up, airs go away, and let's go ahead and apply our car and delete it. Boom, should have just actually disabled it in case we had to make some more adjustments. So let's go find out where it is and let's drive. So we'll get some speed going. And now you notice we're way less tippy, right? We can get quite a bit more speed going before we start to tip. Now it does still get up lift up on one side for us there but the chance of tipping is greatly reduced awesome now the next thing we're going to take a look at we'll go ahead we'll pull our car back into the scene you'll find this bad boy is we're going to go around and play with the center of mass for our whole vehicle and i'll go ahead and open this up we'll go ahead and make another empty and i'm just going to call it center of mass and I want this 
Yeah, I'll put it in a body. And it should be centered for now. Yep. And for all of our scripts, let me just take a look here. We have the motor, we have the network. Um, I'm just gonna throw it in motor for now. Later on, we'll probably wanna move it somewhere else. So we'll go ahead and we'll open up motor. And we're gonna go ahead in our wake function. Uh, let's do it in start actually. What we're going to do is take our rigid body center of mass. So we don't actually have a reference to it yet, do we? We do not. So we'll come down here. And it's private. So if I spell it right, rigid body. And I'm just going to call it our body. And we already have the required component. So we'll keep that there. And we'll just say, our body is equal to get component and we're going to use the rigid body and like I said before my assignments like this here where I'm getting components I like to do that in a wake and of course we could just add the next line in there as well but these type of statements I like to do with my start. So we're going to go ahead and take my R body dot center of mass and equal it to a new public that we're going to make up here. My mouse stops going all spastic on me. Uh, so game object. No, we don't even need the game. We're going to make it a transform because that's all we're interested in. And I am actually just going to call this uh, center of mass. And this is going to be equal to center of mass dot position. Great. So we'll save that off. Come back over to our car. Uh, it should be for the wheels. Where's the motor? Right here. Uh, did I not make it public? I did not. And if we come back in, there we go. So we're going to go ahead and grab that center of mass that we created, put it in. And this here will help us out if we do happen to flip over. Having a lower center of mass will help us basically be righted back to the position that we want to be here. Now, ideally in a car, your center of mass is generally let me grab it here a little bit lower than center because well let's face it, the bottom of a car is much heavier than the top of a car and wherever your motor is if you have your motor in the front it's usually a little closer to the front as well now if you're going for extreme realism uh, you might want to look up some specs in the car that you're modeling but for me I actually want it to be pretty low for my center of mass and I do want it I think a little bit in the front but maybe not quite that much you don't really want to play with the side to side uh, if we have time later on and we get into having our car take damage and actually get into mesh deformations then we can start moving around the center of mass because if you start losing your like front quarter panel you have less mass over there you should move this kind of like to one side back a bit but I don't know if we'll have time this month to get to that but anyway I know I want it down a bit. The further down, the less chance you have of it um, flipping over and staying on upside down. But you don't want to get too crazy. You want to play around with this as well. I'm going to say around there to start off with. Again, realistically, it'd be up more. But we're going to come in, hit apply. I'm just going to disable it. Keep it in the scene. Hit start. Find the car that it spawns for us. And we got to fix that. So we'll hit stop. And let's go back into our script. And I grab position. And that grabs the world's position. That's not what we want. What we want is the local position. Right up there. There we go. Save that off. Let's come back in. No error. So we'll go ahead. We'll start that bad boy back up. And take a look at it. There we go double F so we can keep an eye on it 
And if everything's working right, this will be it for this tutorial. And next we'll get into maybe a little bit more, one more round of fine tuning mixed in with uh, getting the wheels to move. If we actually go ahead and hit some of these bumps over here. There we go. I don't quite have enough force to get up there. But we noticed if you tried this with the sway bars and center gravity turned off, you'd be all over the place. You'd be tipping. But anyway, that looks pretty good. We're not flipping over anywhere. So we got that one set. So we're going to go ahead and get the tires fixed up in the next one as far as moving around. And I think that's it. We're not I'm not going to play around with skid marks or anything yet until we get into the next series of uh, tutorials. So yeah, I guess we're going to have to decide what kind of game we want to start making with this. I've already made the racing car game. Woo, made it. Oh yeah, take it. Oh, we need more power. More power. <laughs> I've already made a racing car game. So this time around, I was thinking something more along the lines of shoot them up type cars, you know, lasers and guns and stuff like that. Uh, if you guys have any ideas, let me know down below either in the discussion form for the course or even just in the YouTube comments. Although I, I do look at the course discussion a lot more than the YouTube comments. But anyway, uh, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Should get your car stabilized. Like I said, next time we're going to play around getting the wheels moving around, do the final tweaks on the... Um, properties for our car to get it moving the way we want and I guess we're going to start designing our game implementing that and then after that will be advanced settings anyway thanks for watching everyone I hope you found it informative and as always I'll see you in the next video bye bye